and tell them, in 10 years' time, 50% of what they learn on the course will be wrong. I can do better. In approximately six minutes' time, everything you have learned in your life so far will be wrong. Let's start with the dawn of consciousness. We probably sat and watched the setting sun going down night after night and thought, there must be thousands of those things over the horizon. Until one bright spark figured out, no, perhaps there's only one of them, and it's going round the earth, which is at the centre of everything. Well, it must be, mustn't it? It's logical, because the earth doesn't move, and when you look up at the sky, everything else is moving around us. So it makes absolute sense. By the way, it's a myth that anyone ever thought that the earth was flat. Nobody was ever that stupid. Anyway, along came Copernicus, and through careful observation, he discovered, ah, no, actually, it's the earth revolving around the sun, which meant that uh, a current model of understanding had to be amended, which is how science is supposed to work. But in his day, there was one slight problem. The spreading of knowledge was very slow. This was largely due to the fact that most knowledge was contained in books, which were handmade. And these manuscripts were often copied from other books. So if there was an error in one of the original books, it merely got duplicated. The invention of the printing press merely speeded up the entire process. For example, the iron content of spinach was misreported when the typesetters put the decimal point in the wrong place. By the time the error was discovered, the information had leaked out into modern folklore. And the basic laws of physics break down at the quantum level. Solid matter is more space than solid by a factor of thousands. Merely observing an event changes it. How can science be objective in such an environment? And it appears that our universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. Now, the finest minds in science have concluded that with our current level of knowledge, that must mean that 90% of the universe is unaccounted for. They call it dark matter. They might as well call it no freaking idea. <laughs> so I bring you back to Copernicus, because I don't know if Copernicus ever existed. I'm told he did by books and teachers, but as we have seen, they can often be wrong. And in fact, all the information I've given to you in this presentation has been derived from these sources. So is it accurate? Well, at least we can trust our own senses, surely, can't we? Look at the squares marked A and B. A is obviously darker than B. But our brains make st stuff up. Our vision has a blind spot which we don't see because our brains simply fill in the missing information. In reality, squares A and B are exactly the same colour. It's the way our brains see patterns that fool us. And even as we are pre presented with the evidence, the brain attempts to adjust for the illusion. So what can we be left with? Just ideas and philosophy? Probably. But this assumes... I think it's got... Uh, but this assumes that the brain is in charge. What if it is our bodies that is in charge and merely gives the illusion that one of its organs seems to be running the show? What happens then? I mean, ask any woman why she needs to buy a pair of impractical shoes and her brain will come up with many reasons, some of which might even make sense. But in reality, it's her body that is making the decision and merely informing her brain to best figure out the best way of achieving that objective. This means we have no free will. Now, some of you will see this woman spinning in a clockwise direction, and some of you will see her spinning in an anti-clockwise one. Now, is that you deciding which way she spins, or is it just the materialistic way your neurons are put together producing a predetermined result. This means that the more we discover about the world, the more complex it becomes. And if we extrapolate from this position, this means that in the future, we will know for sure that we understand absolutely nothing. 
And so paradoxically, this means the more intelligent you are, the more doubtful you are about reality. And conversely, the more certain you are about anything, the more ignorant you are of its true nature. So I'll leave you with a quote from Gloria Steinem, that truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. <laughs> Thank you.